Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Let's look at the issue of ASU and uh, the salary and arrears. The Academic Staff Union of Universities have received full salary for the month of November, uh, that's 2022. A senior member of the union at Bayaro University, Kanu, made this known in an interview. However, he said that the federal government refused to pay lecturers for eight months in which the union embarked on strike. In October 2022, they were also paid pro rata, that's half pay, according to the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige. Lecturers across the country have been protesting against the decision by the federal government. Meanwhile, the National Executive Council of the Union is expected to hold a crucial meeting in the coming days over the withheld salaries. We have Dr. Peter Ugundoro, an educationalist, research and leader of Nigerian Teachers Online community of over 470,000 members. Ugundoro, it's good to have you join us. It's my pleasure. So quickly, how do you, um, you know, respond and react to this? What do you make of the situation? The government had asked the people to go back to the classrooms, these lecturers, and that they were going to, you know, live up to expectation, pay everything. And then the teachers honored the invitation. There was also even a court uh, order, which they respected. And now, uh, you know, the government has paid salaries, but withholding arrears for eight months. Yeah, the government is um, acting as a bully, as, and that's irresponsible behavior. And the government is um, uh, teaching the rest of us bad, bad, bad habits, bad attitudes. The government is telling the rest the employers in our country that they can do, you know, anything they like with their employees and, and get away with it. Our government, as we know, is uh, Nigeria's biggest employer, and. Uh, is, is a kind of uh, role model. So whatever the government does is likely to be what other employers are likely to copy. So I think that this is very unfortunate for us. The government hasn't yet recognized that education truly is a bedrock of development. And if we continue to toy with the people who operate in the higher education realm, we are actually toying in a very uh, terrible way with the future of our country. Because you need great ideas. You need ideas that are... Uh, those who operate in the ivory towers produce to be able to deal with the enormous development challenges that confront Nigeria. Unfortunately for us, uh, the politicians who are in our country are uh, obviously illiterate. They don't understand these things. And because uh, they do not wear the shoe they, and therefore do not know where it pinches, they are not able to uh, find themselves to be under pressure to fix the um, education problems con that confront our country. Of course, you know that their own children are not here. They are all training abroad and they are pawning uh, the dollars that we do not have to keep their children in places where they get the best education, hoping that they will come back and continue to oppress the rest of us. So um, definitely this is irresponsible behavior and we are encouraging these highly skilled people to leave the shores of Nigeria and go out and work in center countries, which I think... Um, is a very uh, unfortunate situation for us as a country. So in all of this, what options do you think uh, is left for ASU and her members? Well, now that it's obvious that the government is a bully, uh, you know that the government is not just an employer. The government is also a regulator and, of course, a law enforcer. They have used the instrument of the court to compel university lecturers to return to the classroom. And so when you are dealing with the bully uh, who seems to be uh, omnipotent, uh, you have to uh, devise very uh, crafty and innovative ways to, to, to take care of yourself. And so what the lecturers are going to do is to also withhold their knowledge. They uh, might uh, pretend to be in the classroom, but they will not be delivering the knowledge that we need to uh, be competitive as, as a nation. That's option one. Option two, is for those who definitely have skills that are in demand in senior countries, they would get out of our country and they are living in droves. So those who are in the health um, you know, sector, whether they teach in universities or work in hospitals, are already living in droves. So we are likely to get to a point within the next one year where uh, even when the uh, government begins to behave responsibly, uh, they will not find people who will trust them enough to want to pick up employment in, in the higher education sector. So this is a very... Uh, sorry, state for Nigeria is a very unfortunate situation we have found ourselves in. Even if it's a sacrifice, the government should make it. 
and pay university lecturers the money that is due to them. They should know if they are trained in industrial relations that this is what always happens. When you, um, workers on, 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 on embark on industrial action, especially the kind that uh, we have seen in the past you know, eight months, they, these lecturers went on strike not in an irresponsible way. They gave notice, government put pen on paper, reached agreements with lecturers and, they, you know, uh, unfortunately failed to uh, play according to the, the agreements. And then lecturers, after due uh, notice, went on strike and you are refusing to give them that which is due to them. I think that we are doing Nigeria a big disservice. And these politicians say, if we have a way and uh, we are willing to try, we should... Um, sweep them out of out of out of uh, the places where they are so but, but but let's also look at some of the concerns that you know the government has raised over time uh, first of all he said that it doesn't have resources no funds you know to meet the demands of us don't you think that this is valid especially when we look at a zero uh, you know remittance to the federation account uh, where we can actually say that we're highly dependent on oil as an ending we haven't been remitting nothing. <laughs> and that's on the well, one hand. I, I, and so I, I, so I, you, I, you, I, if you look at, you know, the current economic situation, don't you think that, you know, government doesn't really have resources and the funds to meet the demands of us? We'll probably pay the areas. Well, that's, that's very logical. Um, tell me, supposing the strike didn't happen, wouldn't you have paid salary for those eight months? And education is not a sector that um, is, is expected to generate funds, you know, to uh, pick up the bills that um, attend uh, to the matters that happen in the education space. So if the, those lecturers didn't go on strike and they were teaching for those eight months, wouldn't they have been paid their salaries? The, the money that was budgeted for that sector, for that uh, particular uh, cost element uh, to take care of those eight months, what happened to that money? Didn't was it not there? What happened to it? Who 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 has who has um, used it to do something else? Who is that person? What's that person's name? And uh, which bank is holding that money? There is we call it subvention. Every month, a certain amount of money is uh, supposed to be allocated to universities and through the National Universities Commission. That money certainly was allocated by Parliament last year. What happened to it? What have we used it to do? Has somebody probably? I put it in a fixed deposit account and uh, it's yielding interest and we don't seem to know what they want to use that interest to do. And um, so we shouldn't we shouldn't engage in this kind of irresponsible argument. We are behaving irresponsibly as, as, as a country. And I think that parents are also behaving irresponsibly. Everybody seems to be thinking that ASU members are the, are the problems. By the time all of them leave Nigeria and go to work in certain countries, that's when it will dawn on all of us that we have not done ourselves any favor. So, but how do we solve this issue? Like, what exactly can we do to need the issue in the board for one, once and for all? Strike yeah. the back and forth with ASU. What exactly do we need to do? Whatever they have, uh, wh whoever is holding the money for those eight months, you bring it out, let them pay. I'm paying now. That's one. Two. Uh, for the longer term, and uh, to be able to uh, uh, pay on a sustainable basis, we should certainly sit down and agree um, with all the stakeholders in the, in the in the industry as to how we are going to uh, be able to deal with the expenses in the sector on a sustainable basis. The current model is not working. We are not uh, government is not going to be able to to deliver on a sustainable basis because they are not. Uh, charging, you know, parents for the kind of education that we would want our children to receive. And so we have to uh, get, engage in proper communication that will enable parents to commit to paying school fees in federal schools. The current model where they pay almost, you know, almost nothing is, is not working. And we have to face that reality. And the politicians should stop being afraid. The, the, the thinking is that if we ask parents to pay for their children to, to, to receive good education in, in federal universities, that um, uh, they will not give them the votes anymore. But that's, that's irresponsible behavior and that's selfishness. Why are we 
worried more about, about the votes that will come in the future rather than the education we should give our children now that will help our country to move forward, you know, economically, socially, politically, and technologically. So I think that we need to think better. We should stop worrying about votes and think more about development. And that's how people um, who have played as politicians in other countries have thought about the development of their countries, and that's how come they have moved forward. Uh, so uh, let, let's do the needful and do it very urgently because it's getting late for us. So many people are living are living in our country, uh, people who have skills, and they, this place has become very, very unattractive. Um, security challenges are there. Now we are adding uh, the uh, 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 absence of you know pay for 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 for, for work that uh, we have committed to. Uh, we are. We are, we, are, we are creating more and more problems that we may not be able to resolve in the next 50 years. All right. Then, Dr. Peter Ogundoro, we have to go now. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We appreciate your time. It's my pleasure. And we just hope that our leaders and those, according to him, who are holding the funds and the money would release it. So there will be national peace. Uh, Dr. Peter Ogundoro is an educationalist. He's... Uh, research and leader of the Nigerian Teachers Online community of over 470,000 members. And that's it. That's the size of a conversation on The Breakfast. Uh, we'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news break. And if you missed out on a conversation, it will be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bokbo. Do have a fantastic morning.